You live, you die. You want to know how I got these scars? Hey guys, I just finished watching The Dark Knight. I am very sick, by the way, so I would have done better impressions if I wasn't. <laughs> but I am very sick, and I, that was hard alone. So, The Dark Knight, one of the most insane movies ever created. Uh, absolute 10 out of 10. I don't even really need to make a review for it, but let's talk about it anyways. And just for fun, maybe I'll nitpick it once or twice at the end there just for fun. So, The Dark Knight, first and foremost, the origin story is out of the way, so we don't have to worry about any of the, the, the establishing nature of an origin story for a popular character, and that's why this movie overshadows Batman Begins already before it even starts um, so heavily, because there's no origin. This is just Joker versus Batman in a 2 hour 30 Battle of the Titans, and I will mention right now, this is probably the fastest feeling 2 hour 30 movie I've ever watched. It goes by like that. Like, I'm ready to watch it again, and I just finished it. So, that's very rare. Um, like, pacing is, like, one of the easiest things to criticize, and this is a movie that you can't really criticize. The pacing is it's so good. There's not a dull moment in this film. Um, so, other than just Batman versus Joker, some other small things are happening, like Rachel is in a love triangle situation ship with uh, Harvey and Bruce, and then um, Lucius is a little bit of a smaller role than you'd expect, but he's um, going towards stepping away from the company eventually. Um, and uh, Alfred's just his good self as always. He has a very insightful wisdom to give, um, especially he talks about his times as like a war veteran and that there was this uh, gang leader who just steals diamonds and then like throws away the diamonds just because he wants to watch the world burn and he uses that analogy to try and explain because Bruce is just unable to understand the, the mental state and psyche that Joker has. He's so obsessed with criminals wanting money or whatever, but Joker doesn't really want anything. Well, he just wants, I guess he wants to send a message that, you know, not everything is controllable and in your hands and not everything is just going to work out the way you want it. So, yeah. Um, and then eventually, also, I wouldn't really call this a spoiler because it's super obvious. The moment you see him hold a coin, you're like, okay, yeah, that's what's happening. So I wouldn't really call it a spoiler, but Harvey, event Harvey is this district attorney who is not corrupted, which is very rare in Gotham, and he introduces this new, like, Bill of Rights legislation that puts away a lot of criminals, um, like several hundred in a single fell swoop. And then it, um, so it makes a huge dent pun not really intended, um, in Gotham's crime, and uh, a big target goes on his back, and eventually he transforms into Two-Face, this absolute psychotic, who I absolutely love, who, just like Joker, doesn't have any superpowers, but um, he relies on a coin to make all of his decisions. He's really not a threat at all for Batman, except for the same, re he's a threat in a different way. He's not physically a threat, but just like Joker, the reason he's threatening and scary to Batman is because he Batman can't relate to his psyche or understand what he's going to do. And even Harvey doesn't even understand what he's going to do himself because he relies on the coin to make the decisions. So very risky situations every time he's pointing a gun at someone because you never know what's going to happen. Um, so The Dark Knight. Why is it awesome? Well, let's keep this short because it's obvious, very, very obvious. Okay, so Heath Ledger gives the most legendary performance of all time, period. Um, the, you know, nothing really comes close to this. I almost felt worried for his well-being because when you become so intertwined with a role like this, it, I, from first-hand experience, I know it damages your mental health. So I'm sure he, he's a professional, so he was probably able to get over it, but I guarantee you that this affected him greatly. So thank you for him sacrificing himself for our entertainment, I guess. Um, he becomes one with his role, complete madman, steals every scene he's in, obviously. Every single line of dialogue he says is gold, um, and he's just so interesting. Yes, he's just evil for evil's sake, but it's a little bit deeper than that. It's about, you know, commentary on society and, um, you know, people trying to control things and how fake everyone is, and he, like, he really believes that everyone's capable of what he's doing, but then he sort of gets that logic, you know, uh, movie does a really clever job of sort of turning Joker's rhetoric on its side because I was kind of, 
I was kind of found myself agreeing with him, a lot of what he was saying, but eventually the movie does course correct itself, because that's not always a good thing when you have villains saying um, stuff that makes sense. Sometimes it makes for a weird viewing experience. Now, this would have been an exception anyway, but they do still go the route of showing Joker, hey, you're wrong, uh, people aren't as uh, bad as you are, so, yeah. Dark Knight, though. Best action in any superhero movie, best cinematography in any superhero movie, highest budget of any superhero movie, best acting in any superhero movie. Um, I don't even need to put the superhero part there, I could probably just get rid of the superhero and just say movie, period. Um, but there's, you know, as far as action goes, there would be some competition. Um, but as far as superhero action goes, this is number one. This is king for sure. Um, everything about the visuals and the explosions and, you know, Christopher Nolan is a visual director first and foremost. And just the fact that we get a Batman movie of this high quality is just, I don't feel worthy of it. Whenever I watch this movie, I'm like, I don't feel like I deserve this. Like, this is too good for its own good. Like, this is Batman we're talking about. It doesn't need to be this good. But it is. So, yeah, and also Two-Face, Aaron Eckhart is obviously super overshadowed because of Heath Ledger, but let's give some credit to Eckhart as well. He has a very raw, visceral, and angered performance, and he really switches between his two characters, and you can tell the noticeable difference, which is good. So, yeah, and also, this is the first time I'm going to use the word plot device um, <clears throat> positively. Every single time I say plot device, it's always a bad thing. However, I think this movie has a very strong plot device, which is Rachel. Rachel is the perfect way to directly tie everyone together and make, it already has huge stakes, but the stakes go even higher once it gets personal. And um, yeah, it's just, so Rachel's involvement is very good in this movie as well. So yeah, I could go on and on obviously, but uh, it's the Dark Knight. You already know it's perfect, I already know it's perfect. Now, if I had to criticize it, and I'm not going to go out on a limb and claim um, that this is fact or anything, trust me, I'm, uh, I would not use the word egotistical for myself, but I am very blunt and forward about my opinions, so like, if I believe something is the absolute truth, I will tell you that. Um, but like, this is a movie, again, like I said, that I don't even feel worthy to watch and experience, so it's not something I'm going to be super confident about criticizing. So these are more just some shower thoughts than real uh, marks or anything. But first of all, I would say the Joker's plan. So yeah, so the Joker contradicts himself probably more than once in this film. Um, but the only one that bothers me is um, when he says that Joker, he says himself, do I look like a guy with a plan? I mean, yes, you have had a large master plan throughout this entire thing. You don't do the things you've done without a plan. Now, that's not the problem itself. One little throwaway line doesn't really matter. Um, but I just wanted to point out that, um, sorry, I'm sick, so my brain's a little bit foggy. Uh, so his, his plan is a little bit convoluted and convenient. It reminds me a lot of uh, Silva's plan in Skyfall, if you've seen that. Skyfall is also a great film. Um, actually, Skyfall probably took inspiration from Dark Knight, if we're being honest. Um, but... Uh, in Skyfall, you know, everything just goes for Silva so perfectly and it's so convenient and every little step of the way needs to go a certain way and there's no way to, like, predict or control his outcomes and yet the villain will act as if it was, like, all, you know, all part of the plan, no big deal. But um, from, a, from a logic standpoint, I think he got lucky a few too many times. So, but again, I'm not going to pretend like I care about that. I'm just simply giving you some shower thought criticisms just for the sake of it. Um, also, was there anything else? I actually don't know if there was anything else. That might be the only thing really for me, if I'm being honest. Um, yeah, actually that's it. I, I think I had one more or two, but I don't, they're so inconsequential that's what's even the point really. So I think the only real criticism I can give this movie is that Joker's plan is just too outlandish for me to uh, suspend my dis <laughs> disbelief long enough for, um, for, for it to, c to come out. It's not like he has like a quick plan that's done. It's like the entire film itself, the entire 2 hour 30 minute runtime, is his little plan. And yes, he claims not to be a schemer, but he's a schemer. We both know he's a schemer. But uh, yeah, The Dark Knight, greatest superhero movie ever created. Um, definitely my top five best movies I've ever watched, personally. Um, Heath Ledger's Legendary. 
I love this version of Two-Face. I mean, it's just night and day compared to Batman Forever. I love that Two-Face in this is actually listening to his coin, and he also has no instinct of self-preservation whatsoever. I love seeing stuff like that um, in villains, so... Yeah, they're just, it's a super legendary film, extremely memorable, has some of the coolest Batman technology we've ever seen. That bike is insane. So many goosebump inducing uh, scenes and moments, and the music, the music just ties everything together and just puts icing on the, on the cake. So, 10 out of 10 for The Dark Knight, obviously. I'm not going to play Contrarian for this one. It is just a fantastic movie.